During times of economic turmoil, your investments might get a little shaky. So shaky, in fact, that some may even be making a loss. You may begin to panic and wonder why you invested in the first place and even be tempted to cash in on your losses and panic sell. But hold on, before you do any of that, take a deep breath, rekindle your thoughts and follow these five steps. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Step one, and it is usually the best thing to do immediately when things crash, and that is to simply do nothing at all. It is well documented that how well an economy does is cyclical, which means there will always be times when markets do well, a bull market, and times when it crashes, a bear market. Some of these cycles are more volatile than others, but the fact still remains the same. We know a crash will always happen and it will always recover. So taking today as an example, although things do seem a bit bleak at the moment with us having just come out of the COVID-19 pandemic, Russians war on Ukraine and inflation at astronomical levels, all having a negative impact on the economy in some shape or form. But history has shown us that the market always has a way of correcting itself. It is just a matter of when. Like, when are you going to hit that subscribe button? Let's look at an example. An advisory financial services company called Guggenheim Partners, what an amazing name that is, have analysed and tracked declines in the S&P 500 since 1945. The S&P 500 is of course an index which tracks the top 500 companies in the US. And this is what they found. In the last 77 years, there have been a total of 126 market declines, all ranging in severity. But the majority of declines, 68% to be exact, were declines between 5 to 10%, and the other 22% were declines between 10 and 20%. But the interesting part is to note that the average recovery time for the S&P 500 to go back to its pre-existing levels range between 1.5 to 4 months on average, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that much time at all. If you look at the more extreme end of the scale with declines from 20% plus, although these are quite rare, the recovery time to pre-existing levels is much longer, with an average between 1 to 5 years. If we take a look at what's happening now with the S&P 500 and look at Google, you can see there's been a steady decline roughly happening from December 2021, when it was priced at $4,766. If we look at the price today, it stands at $3,957, which is roughly a drop of about 17%. So if we look back at this table, at the moment, this decline would sit in around about the 10 to 20% decline bucket, which means that the average recovery would be around about four months. Although it is difficult to know how long this decline will go on for and how far it will continue to go on, one thing we can take from this is that if you are investing in the long term, this generally means markets will eventually recover, so you don't need to panic, and you should consider continuing on as usual. But if you do want to put a number on what this long-term number is, you should be looking at at least five years as a minimum, as this is the highest average for recovery from this analysis. But this is of course applicable only if you are investing in the S&P 500 yourself. Things may differ slightly depending on what product and markets you are investing in. So do do your research, but I'm willing to bet it is going to be a very similar story. So the takeaway from this is if you are investing in the long term, perhaps maybe just turn off the news once in a while and stop looking at the ending balance on your portfolio on a daily basis and just simply do nothing different to what you would normally do. Following on from this is step two. And this is to avoid panic buying and selling. I've already spoken about how the performance of an economy is cyclical. So with this knowledge, you should come to expect that bear and bull markets are common and you should always avoid panic selling or buying. It's really easy to get emotional when it comes to investing, particularly when things start going south. But informed investors should know that emotions and investments do not mix. If you do find yourself panicking, you should probably take the time first to re-evaluate your portfolio and even your risk appetite. Experiencing panic usually indicates your current setup is perhaps maybe too risky for you, or perhaps maybe there's even a knowledge gap that you should fill. Spend time researching, understand why the economy is performing the way it is and how it is potentially impacting your portfolio. Or simply read or even reread research to remind you that sometimes doing nothing is all you have to do. And this may be enough to calm your nerves. However, there is of course a chance that after all of that research, the answer may be that you should still need to sell or buy, but at least this will be an action taken by someone who is now informed 
and taking control over their portfolio rather than someone just doing it in a panicking whim. Buying and selling on a whim is never a good thing. Also, when it comes to panic selling, it's common sense that successful investing means you buy low and sell high. If you sell when things go to pot, then panic selling means you're doing the complete opposite of that. And this similar story rings true for panic buying. Don't confuse that because prices are going low, this means that every investment opportunity to buy stock is going to be a good one. Although it may seem like a good opportunity at the time, without doing any thorough research and analysis, panic buying is also not a good thing either and could result in further losses. Speaking of buying, step three, and that is to take economic downturns as a potential opportunity to invest in assets at a great value. Bear markets can often offer amazing opportunities to buy assets at a discounted price. Just ensure that you are not acting on emotion and do your due diligence to work to understand if potential investment opportunities are available so you can reap the rewards during times of crisis. Remember the common saying, and that is successful investing is buying when the prices are low and selling when they are high. Also continue to buy investments if you were intending to do so anyway. Timing the market is a near enough impossible task to pull off. So rather than that, focus on time in the market and invest anyway, especially if you are planning to do so in the first place. One method that you can use to see if a stock is worth investing in is a technique used called value investing, which I have spoke about already in a two part video on this channel. And I'll link that in the description box down below. Watch these videos and you'll understand the principles of value investing. And I even go through a real life example so you can do it yourself. The next step is to build, if you haven't got one already, an emergency fund. If you don't have one, start one immediately. This should be money tucked away somewhere in an easy access account, which should hold enough money to cover your expenses for at least a couple of months. The absolute minimum I would suggest is to go for two months, but depending on your risk appetite, you can go for more. In this household, we stick to three months. That way, should you need cash immediately and then the stock market does tumble, you can access your emergency fund to cover you in the meantime, rather than accessing your investments. And lastly, step number five is to reduce the amount of debt you have. When the economy crashes, having debt or even taking on more debt really needs to be scrutinized. Having a higher exposure to debt during a time of economic downturn will increase your chances of needing access to immediate cash whilst your investments are at price points that are perhaps maybe not ideal. So if you do find yourself overly exposed to debt, Perhaps revisit your spending to see if you have any means to take any action to reduce the amount of debt you have. And if you can help it, please do not take on any more unnecessary debt either. Cool, so those are the five steps to manage your investments during an economic downturn. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any tips you would like to share. And of course, if you did find this video incredibly useful, hit the like button and subscribe. Bye.